Archibald the Grim, Lord of Galloway and Earl of Douglas, died on Christmas Eve 1400. He had been a powerful ally to the Crown and had consolidated most of Galloway under the Earldom of Douglas. He built Thrieve Castle to serve as the centre of his power, having previously stayed at Loch Fergus by Kirkubri. There is no doubt that Archibald had made the Douglas family both powerful and indispensable to the Crown. His eldest son, also Archibald, had a hard act to follow. He made a valiant attempt, becoming Lieutenant General of Scotland and a de facto regent for James II, until he was killed in the Battle of Verneau against the English in France. While his death plunged Scotland into renewed political infighting as James's mother, Joan Beaufort, and Sir William Crichton fought for control over the young king, it also meant that his 14-year-old son, William, became Earl of Douglas. As a teenager succeeding to possibly the most powerful earldom in Scotland, William was a bit extravagant with his lifestyle choices. Acting like a prince in Galloway, he went everywhere with a retainer of a thousand men. Meanwhile, Sir William Crichton had essentially kidnapped the young king and was holding him in Edinburgh Castle. Crichton was backed by a faction of Scottish nobles that included Archibald the Grimm's brother, James, William's great uncle. Now, he had earned himself the nickname James the Gross and was Earl of Avondale. He was also helping his great nephew to administer the Douglas estates, which was a source of some political power to Crichton's faction. Perhaps then, for his own benefit and for the benefit of Crichton's faction, James was in fact instrumental in what happened next. William, now 16, and his 12-year-old brother David were invited to dine at Edinburgh with the young king, who was now 10. There's only one contemporary source we know from the time, the Auchinleck Chronicle, and it is pretty scant on the details. Later accounts are much more generous with them. However, perhaps we should take that with a pinch of salt. The story goes that the young lads were entertained in royal fashion with a feast and seats at the king's table. We're told Sir William Crichton served them up a black bull's head, a very portentous dish that traditionally meant death. Then, with the young king screaming mercy for William and David, the boys were dragged from the hall to the top of Castle Hill, outside of St Margaret's Chapel, where they were given a trial and then beheaded right there and then. The charges were that they were posing a direct and meaningful threat to the Crown. William may have been showy and highly indulgent with his newfound status, but it's difficult to imagine that he was seriously plotting against the King. It's now on impossible to believe that David was. Which brings us back to James the Gross. Who stood to gain the most from the boys' deaths? James, of course. After the black dinner, he became the se seventh Earl of Douglas, but he only got to enjoy it for three years before he died, leaving the Douglas estates in the hands of his eldest son, William, a man whose name would later be used to scare children. <laughs>